name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This fourth Sunday of Advent, we begin with a brief uh, line of scripture from Isaiah. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Sue, could you please lead us in the confession of sin? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Sue, if you could help with the prayers. Lord, open our lips. Sue, you're on mute. Sorry. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. Herb, could you please lead us in the Venite? Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hands. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Sue, if we could call upon you to read the psalm for today, please. Psalm number 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. O Lord of, O God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For, for before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks be God. God. Braxton, could you please lead us in the song of Zechariah? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is taken from Romans. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was a descendant from David according to the flesh and was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and to the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son. And you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son. And he named him. Jesus, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Of course, we all know the song, I'll Be Home for Christmas. And during this season, it seems everyone from consumer cellular to stop and shop and shop right is bombarding us with all kinds of hype about home. Why, even a few years ago, an iconic commercial from the 1990s was brought back when son Peter arrives home at daybreak, brews a pot of Folgers coffee, and his whole family comes down the stairs for a good cry and a Merry Christmas. Just the way we remember, right? Well, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were not home for Christmas. Neither were the shepherds and the magi. Only Herod stayed at home, and it was from his armchair that he sent orders driving hundreds of families into mourning over the death of their firstborn sons. Even in our world today, with so many broken homes, so many homeless people, refugees, migrating populations, what is? Where is home? What is the true meaning of home? In Matthew's gospel, the foundation of home life is splintered. 
when Joseph suspects that he can't trust Mary, the fabric of their future life together seems ripped apart. To divorce her quietly may indicate respect and discretion, but hardly love. Their hope for a home seemed ruined. Even though the angel who comes to Joseph in a dream acts as an agent of reconciliation so that Joseph decides to take Mary as his wife, when the story continues, they are homeless again, wandering to Bethlehem in search of shelter, their firstborn child far from a carefully prepared nursery or doting grandparents. From this story of Joseph and Mary, we are reminded that home is not in the end a physical place in which we dwell. No, the real home is within, where God dwells. Ironically, it is those deprived of a physical home who most appreciate the inner dwelling place of God. A Dutch girl who recorded her deportation by Nazis and died in a concentration camp believed that people were houses with open doors. Some were empty. They needed to become dedicated to God. God was her, in her own words, most honored lodger, whom she told, I shall try to make you at home always. When we meet people who are at home with themselves and God, we know instantly. They are quietly centered and sure, content with themselves. They do not make burdensome demands on others. The other kind of people drain their energies in a search for identity that is futile because they think they are finally going to feel at home somewhere else. They cannot believe that they are the home in which God would love to live. Because they are not at home with themselves, they cannot be comfortable with anyone else. Perhaps those who have become strangers to themselves could be home for Christmas. Or perhaps this could be our gift to others, to help them end their exile from themselves by accepting them as they are. Such would be a loving reminder that Christ is pleased to live in them, despite the work that still needs to be done on the house. Amen. Before the time, let's take a moment to reflect on that beautiful homily. Tammy, could you please lead us in the Apostles' Creed? Certainly. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Tell me if you could also help with the prayers. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. I'm sorry. And also with you. And also with you. And lead us to the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Sue, if you could lead, help me with the suffrages. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. 
Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray for the sick and suffering. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants. We pray especially today for David Welsh and Sharon Doyle, both battling COVID. Mark Gaeta, Miriam Chico, Helen Walsh, Richard C. Almash, Michael DeSola, Betsy Palmetto, and Mary Fries. Anna Kerr Good, Jan Varley, April Kerr Valentin. Are there others? Also, Renee Durrett, who is isolated at home with COVID. Ashley Gaeta, Maureen Gardula. Allison Mize, Bonnie Cassidy. Lord, we ask that give you give your power of healing to those that minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We also pray today for the departed. O oh God, who by the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and death and brought life and immortality to light, grant it your servants. We pray especially today for Father Jim Spada. Are there others? Robert Kerr, Joseph Orlando, Vivian Kerr. Smart. Let us pray for families where this will be the first Christmas that a loved one is not with them. Being raised with him, I know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory. Who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. Special prayer for Advent. This Advent, Lord, come to the manger of our hearts. Fill us with your presence, free from the very start. As we prepare for the holidays and gifts to be given, remind us all of the gift you gave when you sent your son from heaven, the first Christmas. It was the greatest gift ever. You came as a baby born in a manger, wrapped like the gifts we find under our tree, waiting to be opened to reveal your love. Restore us to the wonder that came with Jesus' birth when he left the riches of heaven and wrapped himself in rags of the earth. Emmanuel, God with us, your presence came that night. And the angels announced, in, into your darkness, God begins his, brings his light. Do not be afraid, they said to the shepherds in the fields. Speak to our hearts today. Make us like those shepherds, shepherd boys, obedient to your call, setting distractions and worries aside. To you, we surrender them all. Surround us with your presence, clear our minds of countless concerns and all the holiday noise. This Christmas, Jesus, come to the manger of our hearts. Amen. Today also, under the, we pray for the, for the churches throughout the world. Under the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Korea. We pray for our um, big sister church, Caroline, and our um, mother church, uh, St. James in St. James. Herb, could you lead us please in the prayer of St. Christendom? Yes. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of the truth and in the age to come, ever life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And also an Advent benediction for this fourth Sunday. May God the Father judge all merciful, make us worthy of a place in his kingdom. May God the Son coming among us in power reveal in our midst the promise of his glory. And may the Holy Spirit make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen.